Now, Marae, I know that you grew up growing in church. So can you tell us, did religion have any impact on your sound or your lifestyle specifically? Of course. Uh, when, whenever, you, whenever you go to church and you, you let God in, there's no way he can get out. So like when, whenever I do music, I always re refer to the, the church riffs or uh, harmonies or tones. I always hear that, that one lady in church like, like you better sing that song. So when you hear that in your head a lot, it started to be like, yo, I, let me push a little harder to get that reaction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like, okay. and, and, and the fact that God just blessed me to be here in the first place, he that's my homie, bro. That's just it. Amen. 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 <laughs> I love the fact that you're not too like, you know, embarrassed or anything by being open with their religion and saying like, you know, God is the reason I'm here. You know, some people shy away from that. So that's really dope. Um, I, if somebody's shy away from it, then they ain't really got a relationship. <laughs> yeah, best way to think about it. Were you in any church activities like the choir or ushering? Oh, yes, ma'am. Um, I was in the choir uh, for a long time in church. Uh, the church choir and like the, also the uh, the solo choir as well. Like, you know, you have the five people go up there and sing the praise worship team. Mm hmm I mean, I, I don't know if they right know what praise and worship team is. So that's what no, I said. Oh, yeah, choir. yeah. In fact, so, yeah, I was on the choir and praise and worship. So, like, that 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 really helped help me get my my vocal straight and i can't thank the church enough for what it did for me to show me how, how to be a good man even though i i take it at first like eventually it's sunk in mm -hmm. did you get the chance to be like the leading vocalist in any of the oh yes ma'am you, 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 okay. you, you, you know i had to do my, my mom ran a choir when i was young that's when i got started on the lead because she when you know, oh. mama ran a choir you always get the, the lead song right. you you me? Spotlight. <laughs> let me get it Absolutely. Now, who who influenced your music growing up? Like, um, who were some musical inspirations that you had? Whether well, that be I, gospel or R and B? It's rap. both. Like, I listened to nothing but gospel R and B growing up. Like, I just started listening to rap until I got like a little older and moved to the different different city. Like, uh, uh, I listened to Karen Clark Shield, Jay Moss, Diedrich Haddon, and then wow. Kelly Price, uh, uh, freaking Music Soul Child. Like, growing up, and then like when I first listened to Drake, I was like, oh snap, Drake is rapping and singing. Like. Mm -hmm. I could do both too. Like I ain't got to pick and choose whether I'm a rapper or a singer. I could just have fun with my craft. And I think those artists really molded me to be who, who I am today. Right. Now, coming from one church kid to another, growing up, my mom kind of kept me away from the secular music, you know? So mm -hmm. did you have those same battles as well? I, I did and I didn't because my mom definitely tried to keep me in church as much as possible. But you know, you got them cousins who, you know what I mean? Yeah. You go chill with, you go spend out your cousin career. Now you're hearing to toot so, that ass. I'm so like, yeah. what the hell is this? What's going on? Like, yeah, so it, it, was, it was always like that. Like, you know what I mean? My, my mom was never judgmental when it came to who, who, who I was or whatever case may be. She always supported me regardless. So I, I thank her for being understanding because, you know, a lot, a lot of Christians are not as progressive because, you know, that's that's the norm. You feel me? So I thank her and people that encourage me instead of discouraging me. Right. OK. Now, what is a day in the life of Marae look like outside of the music? Um, it's boring. <laughs> like for real, I, I got three kids and a wife, so like I'm I'm not a party animal, so I ain't really trying to go out and hang out. I really just chill in the crib with them, watch TV, watch movies, eat snacks, and just bullcrap with the fam, like joke. Or I chill with my squad. We'll play some games, we'll smoke, and we'll just call niggas ugly all day and joke with everybody. Okay, okay. What do you guys call it from North Carolina? Over in Jersey, we call it rushing or roasting. What do you guys say out there? Now nah, we're like, I'm about to get on his ass. That's like that's all oh, that's it is. Like, it is. Boy, I'm about, okay. Boy, I'm about to get you, boy. You got be top. Like, okay, okay. <laughs> Love the slang. Now you live by the motto that it's easier to be a thug than it is to be a good person. So can you tell us how do you remain positive when obstacles or people try to test you? Honestly, I, I think we're all supposed to we're supposed to feel obstacles. You're, you're supposed to go through the pain so you can accept. And appreciate the good stuff. So I don't take the 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 bull crap as obstacles. I take it as lessons. Because at the end of the day, I was supposed to learn I shouldn't mess with this person, or I shouldn't be around this area, or I shouldn't be here. But how am I going to learn it without going through it? Mm -hmm. So I feel like I love the obstacles. I love the pressure because it makes me work that much harder to be the person that I know I'm supposed to be. It took me a while to get here, and it took me a while to accept who who I need to become. And I'm glad that I finally have because. You know, going back for me, it's 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 positive vibes all the way through. No matter what song I make, no matter what I do, the way my heart is set up, I just love like being a positive, genuine dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. Not too many people are have that mindset, so that's amazing to have that. 
Now, can you tell us how did Quicksand come about? Because earlier I was telling you how I was just listening to it. It was a hit the radio. And then I'm like, okay, this this is dope. Like, you know, it's a different sound. It's not something you hear usually. So yeah, how did it come about? What was the inspiration behind that single? Well, um, I actually been writing music for a long time. And it, it always been the kind of music I thought would get me on. And like my wife is like one of my biggest supporters. Like she always was like, yo, I, I love your music and I feel like you have so much more talent, you have so much more to give while you keep making these sung songs that you think other people want to hear. Write some stuff that you know is coming from you and it don't seem so hard to make. Mm -hmm. And I took that kind of like a personal challenge, like, like you tell me my music isn't good, so let me show you how music, good my music can be. I didn't know what to write yet until I heard the beats, because I usually I let the beat flow me to what I don't, the, the beat sounds sad, I'm writing sad, that's how it is. And quick saying, it didn't put me in a sad space, it made, it made me want to be upbeat, but talk about shit that people really go through and the mm -hmm. shit that I went through. But I didn't know it was going to be like, taken the way it is. It was really a song for me to show my wife that like, I could really do that shit. Like, so <laughs> it's crazy. Wow. That it, it's crazy that it went so far when it was just, it was just me completing a challenge for my wife and my life to see if I can really do this shit. So it's mm -hmm. crazy. Now you just said before you were making music for what you thought people would want to hear. What did that sound like? Uh, booty shaking, females, cars, clothes. Oh, okay. the, the stuff that I that I didn't have, never had, couldn't pay for. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Got you. Now, congratulations, though, because being that you did follow, you know, your true sound and your wife's uh, suggestions, Quicksand got the ability to reach 50 million views. So yes, ma'am. It has to feel good. Yeah. Congratulations. Crazy. On accomplishment. Um, can you describe how that changed your perspective as far as your career? I ain't gonna lie, my perspective changed a lot of views ago. Um, it changed when I first hit my first 100,000 views. That's when I realized, like, yo, I, I might actually have something that, I, that I've been trying to create for the last 12 years. It, it finally worked. So it finally clicked. Like, the person that I want to be seen as is not the person that I've been for the last couple of years, the last couple of years. I want to be the person that in my mind, when people see me, it's like, yo, this this dude is is really a humble, good dude. And he appreciates the fact that not everybody gets this chance, this opportunity. I don't want to play too cool because there's rappers who work hard just like me who's not here. So I don't want to kick them in their ass like, oh, I'm too cool because I'm here now. Nah, nigga, like I still want to show everybody still can make it. You got to work hard. And I'm a regular nigga and I want regular people to know this shit can happen for you. That's so inspiring, especially considering the fact that you got love from fellow North Carolina natives, such as the baby and J. Cole. I know okay. that had to be crazy. Can you describe for us how that felt when you seen that? I know it was on Instagram. So like, did you, did a bunch of people tag you or did you get the notification yourself? What was that like? No cap. Um, I thought the J. Cole shit was a prank. <laughs> like, I thought it was like one of his little fan pages that, you know what I mean, had, had a little bit of buzz and they it, it was fucking with me. But yeah. when I found out that it was really him, I said, yo, no fucking way. I call everybody, my, my girl, well, sorry, excuse me, sorry, honey, my wife, mm -hmm. and then all my homies, I was like, yo, like, this nigga fucking with me, bro, like, no cap. And then the baby played my shit while he was getting ready. I was like, this nigga just playing my shit, like, regular smuggler, like, that shit mm -hmm. crazy. Like, that shit was fire as hell, bro. I can't even explain how that feel when people from your, from where you from, show you love when they really don't have to. Right, right. Now, were you nervous about what your next hit was going to be about, or did it just come naturally to you? Honestly, I don't, I, I don't really get nervous because I feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be. I feel like as long as I stay on the right path, everything is going to happen the way it's supposed to. Like, Every, everything is already written for me. So it's not like I can do anything to change the shit. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. So the songs that I write is really just my truth, who I am. And I'm hoping that it just gets the same love and respect that Quicksand did because at the end of the day, that's a song that's just me. So it, it wasn't hard to write me because when I finally realized, hey, I have, my, I have a story to tell. I have my own story that now I know is relatable. Let me keep pushing my story and, and, and it's working. So thank God for that. Right, right. Okay. Now, if you could open up for any artist in the industry, who would you open up for? Ooh. If I could open up for any artist in the industry, of course, it got to be my nigga Drake. Okay, of course. Okay. Two yeah, more. Two more. Out. Let's do the big three. I right, big three, Drizzy, J. Cole, and Travis Scott. Oh, okay. Okay. Fire Travis line. Scott, yo, them crowd okay. crazy. Yeah, yeah. I want to get in front of one of those and just feel that energy, bro. That shit is crazy. Yeah, yeah. I've been, I seen him at a Rolling Loud concert once and I know, like, it gets turned. It gets turned for him, yeah. for sure. 
I got yeah. I gotta feel that one time. Now, how do you relate to your fame? Being that it's so fresh, I know there's some days you probably like, yo, I really can't believe I'm here. Like, has your inner dialogue to yourself shifted since then? Uh yeah, a, a lot. Like now it, it comes to a point where where now I'm 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 famous and I use this because I don't feel famous, mm -hmm. but because I'm I'm labeled famous, it's now you gotta think about what you say. You gotta think how you move because you're an example. Whether you wanna be or not, whether you uh, are aware you are, you are an example. People see you and wanna emulate because they wanna be where you are. So mm -hmm. my, my inner thoughts have have changed to the point where it's like, hey, make the right decision. Yo, yeah. make sure what you're what you're putting out is something when your kids watch you one day, they like, oh shit, that's really my dad. You feel me? Like I I don't want it to be like a couple of years from now, oh, this nigga's a phony, this nigga's a fake. No, no, I want to be myself. So when I'm perceived in the future, it's like this nigga's been the same since he started. And I'm starting that narrative right now. And I'm never gonna change that narrative like at all. Wow, yeah, that's that's really dope. Can you tell us how you stay motivated, especially with having this new mindset that you know you're you're changing the narrative? How do you stay motivated on days that you just feel like, you know, man, this is a lot right now? When that, and and those those days are, are are frequent because we're humans. We always feel like something is too much. You you got to put yourself in the perspective of thinking like, I'm tired of shit today. Mm -hmm. But look why I'm tired. I'm not tired because uh, I'm strung out. I'm not tired because I had a hangover. I'm not tired because of, of the bullshit. I'm not tired because I'm doing something I ain't got no business. I'm tired because I just did forty interviews, fifty drops, pulling up. I'm, I'm tired because I'm living the dream that I've prayed for my whole life. So mm -hmm. that's that's how I think about it. Like, why not smile when I should be the happiest I've ever been in my life? Mm -hmm. So I smile. Okay, <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> now, you said it before in a previous interview that you don't like to be uncomfortable. So can you tell us about a time where you have had to step out of your comfort zone in order to succeed? Um. When, when, it, when it comes to comfortability, it, it's, it's all about what you grew up around. So to me, when, when I'm doing songs or, or different songs, my comfortability is, is telling my story, you know what I mean, and, and telling my narrative. But there's going to be songs I'm going to have to make that's for somebody else. And I think I'm going to have to put that in perspective and jump out of my comfortability and say, hey, Moray, you're going to have to reach other people, not just the ones who you already have established. I'm having to get the other people as well because my message had to go longer than just the streets. It had to go further, further than just us. You know what I mean? I, I, I wanted to be all of us and I have to reach all of us. So I'm gonna have to learn how to take that being too comfortable stuck in my own wigs and have to adapt to other things. Mm -hmm. Why is that important to you to make sure that you change that narrative? Like, why do you feel like it's your job to do it? Uh, only because I have a light. Like people looking at me now. so. Right. Why why not give them something good to look at to where people can, can be proud of this shit? Like I, I never had a lot of people just write me and tell me they're proud of me. Like that shit feels amazing, bro. I want to keep getting that shit my whole life. People that I don't even know be like, yo, Moray, you inspire me. Yo, your song changed this. I was going through this and listen to your song over and over got me. I want, I love that. I want to wow. keep getting that, bro. Like that shit feels good to me. And yeah. I want to keep making people feel good. Wow. Now, I know even though the fame is fresh right now, I know that your career will continue to take off and then heighten. But at the moment, because we're in the pandemic, can you tell us how the how the current pandemic has changed your perspective as far as your career? Um, well, I started in the pandemic. So all I really know is the pandemic career. Mm -hmm. So so I'm really looking forward to when it's over. What's right. out there? Um I'm like right now, all I know is Zoom meetings. All, all I know is Zoom interviews and all I know is phone call interviews. All I know is stuff like that. So when it's time for me to start going to the stations and parlaying, I'm I'm ready for that. So I can only speak from <laughs> a pandemic career, like, because I only been had a career in it during the pandemic. So mm -hmm. um once everything clears up, then I would definitely have a better answer for you. Okay. So I've done some things, but I haven't done anything yet besides like stuff like this in the studio. So I just can't wait to get my feet out there and realize what fame and, and this career is really about. That's interesting to actually start your career during the pandemic and have a different experience <laughs> off rip. That's interesting. Has the yes. pandemic affected your life in any way? Um, honestly, I would say it, it affected my life and and, and some good ways as well as bad. 
the bad ways, of, of course, you know, the job situation, people be like, you know, I, I lost my job. Um, a, a lot of stuff like that happened and people have lost their life. People that I've known have got the virus and, and they were sick. So that, that's the bad. But the good is that I really had time to focus on my family. And I really had time to like start learning new things that I didn't know. I knew like before the music, I was focused on getting to the music. I was focused on working. I was focused on this. I, was fo I wasn't really focused on like having time to sit down, talk to my wife and my kids the way I should have. So now that I have more time, it's like, oh snap, what's your what's your favorite color? Oh, word, that's that's crazy. You got the same color. It's it's inspired to me that I get to find out these new things, these, these things that I should have known because I have time now. Right. So, and it, I take everything as a learning experience. Stuff that I should have already known, I learned during the pandemic, and I appreciate the learning experience. Okay, okay. Now, being that your career has reached this height of success, I realize that you haven't cashed out any like big designer brands or the big chains that the rappers are doing nowadays. Is there any reason for that? I mean, that's not that's not that's not really me. Like, I ain't, I ain't have it before, so like I'm not really present. But like, I got these two little these two little chains. I, I try, you feel me? So mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I got some earrings, but like I'm not really feeling like I ain't. I'm, I'm not a clunker, like all that clink, 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 clink. I'm not really feeling mm -hmm. that shit. But is it, is it fire? Hell yes. But I got three kids and I got a whole family. I, I'm not about to spend $68,000, $100,000 on, on one chain. That's Yes. I can't do that. But them other niggas who got all that bread, ball out, my boys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I respect that. I really respect that, Murray. And last, I see that you made the signature dance. Mama, I'm hungry. So is there any more moves up your sleeve that we can expect? You know, TikTok, is TikTok and its dance challenges are thriving nowadays. So, yeah, you got any more moves coming away? I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dancing ass nigga. Like, I love my fat boy jig. So that Mama, I'm hungry was a complete accident. I was just having fun. You feel me? So <laughs> I don't know about no planned ones, but best believe it. If there's something on there, y'all catch, please vibe with me. Just vibe with me. You feel me? No okay. cap. Okay. Well, thank you, Marae, for sitting down with Preen. Um, it was a good time enjoying. I mean, I had a good time interviewing you. I'm um, to say I enjoyed this interview. So yeah, we'll definitely be we locked in with you soon. Let's get it. Okay. All right. Thanks again. <laughs> yes, ma'am.